We, we actually, we, had a, we gave these guys an assignment to kind of come up with their top 10 sort of desert island films. If they were stuck on a desert island, what would they, what 10 would they want? Um, I guess we have um, maybe the slides to, to say, yeah. Um, let's pull those up. Is these oh, are Edgar's. And I guess we can, you know, uh, talk about maybe sort of like why you chose some of these and, and you know. And Edgar and I had some crossover, mainly that first one. Yeah. So I took that one off my list. Oh, you saw my list and then you picked a different well, kind. I had done my list, but I hadn't seen yours yet. And I was like, oh, dang. That one's gone. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, um, that's, I mean, it's funny when you do top 10 lists because like, I think sort of sometimes, you know, um, I think when you get asked to do top 10 lists, like I've done the sight and sound list before and I had that real internal struggle of whether to look cool or whether just to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so this is mostly just an honest list, really. I mean, Raising Arizona, like we talked about already, you could easily put Slash, Evil Dead 2, both came out in the same year. Uh, 2001, The Space... I have no foreign films on here, I apologize. Um, but uh, I would, if I did, I would put a Louis Boone well film in there, probably. Um, Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie. 2001, Space Odyssey. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's a piece of art. American Wealth in London is, is probably one of the first movies that truly blew my head off. And with each passing year, I think it's, it's even more perfect. I think it just... It does not date... Like, it would be... I was actually asked to do a remake of American Wealth in London, and I said no, because I said, how can you improve on perfection? <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to be the person to fuck it up. <laughs> Ta now, Taxi Driver would be a very depressing film to have on a desert island. <laughs> <laughs> or it might make sure you have, like, well, it's, it's not that bad, you know, here. <laughs> I would be as lonely as Travis. Um, <laughs> Taxi Driver, I feel that was the first like real grown-up film that I saw. I, I had heard about it, and I think I saw it first on VHS. And I remember, I don't know, feeling like it had sort of like a dark hypnotism about it. Like, it, I think I had seen other kind of grown-up movies, but that's the one that I remember watching it on my own in my bedroom on VHS, feeling that, uh, uh, you know, that it was something kind of illicit about it, or it was... A, it was a dangerous and powerful movie, and I think it's extraordinarily well made. Um, Dames is a Busby Berkeley musical, uh, which I'm slightly obsessed by, and partly because, I don't know if you've ever seen any Busby Berkeley films, but nobody in Hollywood could do that now. And, uh, and, and they wouldn't let you make those movies now because you'd be forced to do it all with CGI, and you know those movies like, have hundreds of dancers in them, and they're just incredible. If you've never seen one, they're well worth working out. Carrie is um, my go-to date movie. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it is absolutely... I, Carrie is the grease of horror films. Uh, like, there's not a single person on this earth who couldn't enjoy Carrie because you either, like, were bullied or you were one of the bullies. Um, but I think that that movie is just absolute like pop perfection and just like perfectly paced and like absolutely kind of um, delivers and still holds up today and two amazing performances in it. Uh, Don't Look Now is Nicholas Rogue's uh, horror movie, which if you haven't seen it, don't watch Meal and the Dying Girl just yet because they ruined the ending. Um, <laughs> Uh, but Don't Look Now is like a, is a, a, an amazing like sort of psychological horror film by Nicholas Rowe with Donald Sutherland and Judy Christie. It's one of the best edited movies of all time. I think, in fact, Criterion are releasing it this year, but it's an incredible movie. Uh, the Driver is a Walter Hill film, Walter Hill's second movie, which I am completely obsessed by and has been hugely influential. Like Walter Hill is a director that doesn't get enough love these days, and... Um, uh, it's a really great, like, sort of one of the first, like, neo-noir films and big influence on, like, Michael Mann, uh, the Coen brothers, um, really, like, spare and funny and action-packed, and I love that movie. Bugsy Malone, Jared said to me earlier, he goes, you're the only other person I know who's seen Bugsy Malone. Has anybody, has anybody else seen Bugsy Malone? Yes, good. <laughs> Bugsy Malone is a, a gangster musical entirely starring kids, um, when I was eight, I didn't actually realize the joke of the movie. I just thought maybe they were... I didn't realize that it was supposed to... You know, I just thought, oh, that, that looks so cool. 
I mean, it's one of those movies that you want to be in it. Yeah, you want the weaponry in that film. Um, <laughs> the guns that shoot these, like, globs of cream yeah. at people. Um, it's got an amazing... Here's, an, here's, a, here's a link. What is the link between uh, Bugs and Milan and another film on this list? Yes, but here's the amazing thing, if you've seen Bugs Malone and, and Taxi Driver. Jodie Foster wrapped Taxi Driver, and three weeks later, she was shooting Bugs Malone, <laughs> which is wow. <laughs> incredible. Uh, but Bugs Malone also has an amazing score by Paul Williams, uh, who uh, is like an Oscar-winning songwriter who wrote The Rainbow Connection on the Muppet movie. He wrote yeah, songs yeah. for the, the Carpenters, and uh, he also wrote the score for Phantom of the Paradise, which is probably number 11 on my list. Uh, there's a little-known film called Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> um, you might have heard of it. It's very good. <laughs> Jared, you want to kind of Here go, we through, go. go through yours? Um, Fargo. Man, and these aren't in any particular order. This is just kind of a brain dump this morning. Um, Fargo, I mean, freak. Coen Brothers, I, it, to me, it's just a perfect film. I love the simplicity of the film. Um, the writing is so perfect. Uh, I love the ethnographic nature of, of where it takes place and that it's in a small town in America. Um, and I just love, to me, it's like when I'm getting ready to do a movie or anything, that's like a film that I love to watch uh, for inspiration. Just the tone of it, the pacing, and, and all the characters that populate that film are incredible. Um, Goodfellas, man, that's one of the most entertaining, amazing films ever. Um, to me, I mean, that, that's a film that's got like 10 scenes in it that I think are just totally inspirational and, on every level as a filmmaker. Um, Swiss Family Robinson, this is where I took um, the Desert Island <laughs> list literally. There's a lot of um, good skill sets <laughs> that if you were on an island that you would want to have. Um, Trapping and domesticating wild beasts <laughs> would be important. Tree houses, um, how to defend yourself against uh, pirates. But I love that movie. Um, it's a guilty pleasure. It's one that you can watch with anyone. It's fantastic. And Edgar says he's never seen it, which I was surprised about. So, um, Gates of Heaven, Errol Morris's documentary. I saw that for the first time in film school. And it absolutely blew my mind. Um, everyone that's, it, it, for those that haven't seen it, it's a documentary about pet cemeteries and the people that run them. And it's one of the funniest, most incredible slices of life I've ever seen. You know, the camera doesn't move. It's just parked in people's living rooms or, or where they live. And his subjects are so incredible. And it really showed me that, um, you know, with an interesting subject and, and them wearing the clothes that define who they are. Like, you didn't need anything other than a parked camera and looking and talking to someone. Um, and aesthetically for me, and even just the comedic timing, the editing, he cuts out on some of the funniest jokes. There, 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 there's a part in it where this guy's wife is talking about their beloved dog that died, and at the end of it, she can't remember a word, and he goes, neutered, and it cuts right after that. <laughs> And it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But the whole film is just full of amazing subjects. And, um, really inspired, for me, the aesthetic of, of Napoleon Dynamite and the way that that film looks. Um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, these, are, these middle three here are ones that, as a kid, I mean, were probably the most watched films in my home with my brothers. I saw Bill and Ted's. That was the most quoted movie. Um, from, my parents hated us because we were always like, you know, quoting it um, all the time. Uh, UHF by Weird Al. Um, I wasn't a Weird Al fan. I didn't even know who he was, but I saw it at the theater and I was convinced it was the funniest movie ever made. And it still holds up to this day. It's a very funny movie. I showed it to my son the other day. He's like, yeah, it's a pretty good show, Dad. <laughs> um, the 80s BMX movie Rad, directed by Hal Needham, the, the famous stuntman and film director. Um, I don't know why that gave me inspiration to live another day every time I watched it. Uh, the final BMX sequence where he wins. I, it would bring me to tears even as a kid. Um, I told my brother about this list on the drive up. He's like, yeah, I mean, 
every time I saw that film, Jared, I would just want to go out and build a bigger jump for my bike. <laughs> Um, but it's got one... Is that the one with Josh Brolin in it? Uh, I don't think Brolin is in this one. What's the one that he's in over the same time? Like, thrashing? thrashing? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the Thrashing and rad. Film. Easy to get them mixed up. Sorry. <laughs> but I have an annual call to Jason Schwartzman and his family because they actually produced Rad to try and get him released on DVD. So we should do a Kickstarter because you can't get that on DVD. It's so weird. Um, a Hard Day's Night, Richard Lester. I love that film. It's the Beatles film. Um, I don't know, man. It's just so good. There's something so raw about it and just the way that they shot it. It was so, I mean, so much stuff um, was impromptu and on the fly. And, and uh, the first time I saw it, I, I just loved it. Um, Robin Hood, that's probably the most watched animated film for me, ever. I love everything about it. Uh, the Elephant Man, that was probably the first film I remember really crying hard um, at. And it's just a beautiful film. So, all of those, yeah. You know what I love about The Elephant Man, too, is it was produced by Mel Brooks, which a lot of people don't realize. And some of mine uh, on, on my list would have been some of those Mel Brooks films, too, like Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles. And I just love that he made Elephant Man, too, which is just such an incredible film. <coughs> um, I like that you have Richard Lester on yours. Because he is another hugely underrated director. Totally. 